public sector um, solutions to climate change, uh, simply because uh, the public hasn't gotten the strength to change governmental policy, and government is not going to change anything by itself into the international and the national gridlock. So um, I looked at something that's really close to home for me, which is Jackson Hole Mountain Resort. Um, and over the seven years I've been skiing there, they've made some huge changes to um, boost their environmental sustainability. Uh, so they're part of the 1% of the planet group, which uh, is basically this group of um, companies that say they'll donate 1% uh, of their uh, sales to uh, this uh, charity, uh, this nonprofit organization, which then redistributes the, the, this amount of wealth over um, different nonprofits that are trying to make solutions for um, climate change. So 1% is actually a really big number. Um, you can see it leads up at the end to more than $100 million, million given back uh, to um, sustainability nonprofits. Uh, secondly, uh, it's part of the uh, climate uh, um, challenge, which is uh, uh, a challenge that's been put up by the National Ski Areas Association. They um, they are trying to um, volunteer. It's a voluntary program where uh, ski areas uh, commit to reducing um, annually their um, um, greenhouse gas emissions. So, uh, as you can see, this list on the right, there's very few um, ski areas. I mean, out of the, the total ski areas of the whole of North America, not many of them are participating in this. So it's uh, not um, it's not big yet, but it's a it's a first step that the private sector is doing. Um, if we go back to Jackson Hole, there is a um, I think it's this tab. Um, there is a. So, yeah, the recycling tab. They've been um, increasing energy conservation, or reduced the uh, usage by 5% um, of electricity, fuel, and propane use. They've uh, reduced water consumption. Uh, they've changed a lot of their fleet. They've got like 50 vehicles and they've changed like 11 snowmobiles already um, to more efficient um, uh, biodiesel um, uh, snowmobiles. So they're slowly um, upgrading their system um, to minimize the cost to their own budget, but to still be able to enact change, which is something that in the private sector you have to do because you're tied to your board of directors for money and everything. So it's not a flip on the head type of change that you could expect by policy changes in the government, but it's something that they are trying to do step by step, which is better than most things are going on. Um, and it's got these quantitative goals that are 10 by 15. So they're basically uh, talking about reducing 10% of its carbon dioxide uh, emissions um, by 2015. So that's next year, which is a big step, uh, especially for the private sector, as I said already. It's all about gradual change. And so they're also going to reduce 10% of, of their domestic water consumption um, because they live in this na natural park area between Yellowstone and the Teton Mountain Range and the National Elk Refuge. So it's this huge area of land conservancy. And the impact they have on the environment by taking water away is big, especially because Wyoming is pretty dry during the summer and they can have huge forest fires. So the more local water they can have there, the less of an impact it'll have on their immediate environment, which I think is great because it's such an important place to conserve. And they're um, going to increase 10% of their waste diversion and by to recycling and composting. There's this pie chart at the bottom. So lifts, they've changed to entirely renewable energy. By that I mean they've been buying um, uh, renewable energy credits, which they still use dirty energy, but renewable energy credits 
uh, you buy them from uh, renewable energy uh, producers and they put that energy back into the grid so that the next person who comes along taking power from the grid will actually be taking some clean energy and dirty energy. So it's a gradual way that the more people who buy uh, renewable energy credits, the demand for renewable energy goes up, so there's more ener renewable energy in the power grid, and then more keep the, that changes the amount of um, dirty energy that's going to be used in the power grid, like uh, fossil fuels and coal. So it's a way of gradually changing. That's what the private sector is all about. So, um, it would be nice that they change all of their this pie chart to renewable energy credits, but. Nobody has the money to do that yet, really. Um, so if you go to, um, I go to here, this site. So this is how renewable energy credits work. Uh, it's, a, it's great. So in the United States, 72% of, uh, of energy consumption is used by buildings. And this is what a clean power grid ideally would look like. It's, uh, and then this is our power grid now. It's really dirty. It's all from fossil fuel and coal most often. There's some nuclear and some wind, but that's like 10% of all we use totally, right? So it's huge pollution. Uh, it, it's huge in pollution right now. And as you buy energy credits, you get these uh, new sources of energy represented by the white and green dots that um, are going to change the um, amount of dirty energy that goes into the power grid and increasing the amount of clean energy. So people who are into the power grid will be using clean energy. So when you're going to heat your house, it might come from wind power, or part of it will come from wind power, or solar, or um, nuclear, or whatever. Um, and um, it's used by major companies like Whole Foods, Microsoft, and the US Air Force is actually the biggest purchaser right now of clean energy credits, which is uh, weird, uh, considering that it's uh, it's very tied to the government, yet the government hasn't done anything about it. So it's showing that parts of the government uh, is actually trying to change um, the way it works without having executive orders or um, going uh, through Congress or whatever. It's all, all about gradual change. Um, and as you can see, the, the more and more you buy, the cleaner the energy grid gets. Um, wind energy represented 50% of all renewable energy credit sales in 2007. So that's a big industry, and it's got a lot of room to grow. So that's another thing which the private sector will take up naturally, I think, because private sector is all about making money. If there's a new industry like wind energy, you're going to develop it. And in 20 years, it's going to be something that's making a lot of money while um, keeping the planet clean. But the question is, do we have 20 years? Um, and then this is what we're shooting for. But <coughs> we're far from there, uh, as you can see. On the first slide, no, second. This is where we're at now. So it's not, it's not so clean. Um, so to recap, basically, the private sector can only do so much because they have this need to make money, they, and they can't, and they don't have government support at this moment to subsidize, uh, majorly subsidize these new technologies and the, this new way of doing business. So they're taking these gradual steps, um, partly because some of them feel responsibility, like Jackson Hole does, to the to their immediate environment because. Jackson Hole is a beautiful place, but also because they need the um, public uh, opinion to be on their side so that they have better sales and everything. So it's a part of public relations and uh, and uh, just goodwill. But if us as consumers can make uh, more and more companies see that we want them to uh, go for clean energy, they will because they want public opinion on your side. It's all about strategy and marketing your product. That's it. Just on that last point, what, how do you think, how would a consumer do that? How would... Well, you would go to competitors that are using more clean energy. So the other, the person you just ditched, uh, the company you just ditched will have to go, now I need to go, if any 
enough consumers do it, obviously. Yeah. Now I need to go uh, make more clean energy than this guy, or purchase more renewable energy credits than this guy, so they come back to you, and then da, 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 back and forth until people are using the max control close to uh, enough clean energy. Well, and in this case, too, it's, it's likely, I would guess, that most of the people who are skiing at Jackson Hole are probably pretty environmentally yeah. conscious anyway. You, you can't go to Jackson Hole and decide you're going to keep polluting. It's just too beautiful. And even if you don't believe in climate change, there's this diagram, um, I'm going to draw it actually, um, that I saw once on the internet. So there's this action, whether or not we take action, and whether or not climate change happens, this happens. Um, so if climate change doesn't happen and we take action, we lose money, right? Okay. If climate change happens and we do take action, we lose money, but we live in a safer world, so we're happy. If we, do, uh, if it doesn't happen and um, we don't take action, we're the same, so we're so happy. But if it does happen, and if we don't take action, we're going to lose money, right? Because we're going to be uh, suffering all the consequences of natural disasters, and we're going to be living in an awful world with famine and war. So, if you've got a one in four chance of being able to carry along as we are. So, ideally, we want this to happen, but the numbers are stacked against us, and this chance is getting smaller and smaller. So out of all of these, the safer chance is always to take action, no matter what happens. So I think this mentality that we're, uh, that people uh, don't believe in climate change and don't want to do anything about it, the more people get exposed to beautiful environments and just think about it in this easy, four chance scenario, then they are, they're going to completely change their mind. You can't be rational and say, I'm going to sit on my butt all day and not do anything. 